There is some weirdo killing women who live in Pacific Heights. That's here. The body of another Pacific Heights strangler victim was found this morning. His grim calling card, a red bandana around her neck. What about General Whalen? We interrogated him at the scene. Some interrogation. Ten minutes and the man walks away. Sydney, we've got the problem. What? No brakes. Born with a silver spoon in her mouth, was Private Eye Raymond Dashiell Caulfield's first wife. This streetwise blonde and I have only two things in common. We were both married to the same man, and we both divorced him. We met for the first time at his funeral. Are you ready for this? He left us his mansion, mortgage to the hilt, and the Caulfield Detective Agency. And how do we manage? We call the cops a lot. Serves him right. <laughs> all right, ladies, any questions before we all have a go at it? All right, let's give it a shot. Mm -hmm. ah, 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 ah. All right. Well, it looked easy when she did it. But if that really were the strangler, I'm afraid I'd just faint. You know, after you learn this stuff, it's just going to become instinctive. <laughs> You're right, Sid. My date nearly lost some teeth when he tried to sneak up behind me the other night. <laughs> Do you two know each other? No. Oh, Rita Stoneham, Bonnie Chase. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You do look familiar, but then I suppose we all do being neighbors in the Heights. Oh, Bonnie is on television, 6 o'clock news. She's our budding anchor woman. Yeah. Lost dogs and senior citizens. Queen of the heart tugs. That was me. After the sports and weather, if there's time. Oh, but now she's really big time stuff. She's moved up to the investigative kind of thing. Yeah, they gave me the strangler story to cover. It's my chance to show them what I can do. And believe me, I'm going to show them. Next. All right, ladies, let's get a move uh, on. Your turn. You. Watch out.
What do you mean you're not going jogging? What about our new fitness program? You promised, remember? Who can remember anything on an empty stomach? Besides, all that self-defense stuff won't work if you're too weak to use it. Against the strangler. Do you mind if we don't talk about the strangler this early in the morning? Well, I think about it almost all the time, especially because his victims are women in Pacific Heights. Like us. Like us. Temporarily interrupt this program for a special news report. Here now at the scene is reporter Bonnie Chase. The body of another Pacific Heights strangler victim was found this morning. His grim calling card, a red bandana around her neck. At 7.03 this morning, a cleaning woman let herself into this house behind me and found the body of Mrs. Rita Stoneham, a woman whom I just personally met last night, ironically at a self-defense class. As with the first victim and the near second victim of the strangler, there were no witnesses and no clues. With me now is Deputy Chief of Investigation Carl Fallon. Isn't that right, Chief? There is no solid evidence as yet? I'm afraid so, as far as we've been able to determine. So except for what you've learned from the near victim, Claudia Parker, there is nothing else to go on? I can't tell you what we have or what we don't have, but I can tell you this. Until we apprehend the strangler, and we will, the police patrols on the heights will be doubled. Poor Rita. Believe this. George, did you get a reverse shot of the spectators? Uh, no, but I better. Wait a minute, Arthur. I don't want to go yet. Just want to make sure you don't catch a chill, Mr. Potter. Did you see that? The way that guy avoided the camera? Just because the guy doesn't want to be on the 6 o'clock news doesn't mean he's a suspect. I guess I am overreacting. Well, I don't blame you. You know what it's like covering this kind of story right in your own neighborhood? I just don't like the feeling of being under siege. I don't like it either. And I'm going to do something about it. Where'd you learn to shoot like that? Oh, my father. He taught me skeet shooting when I was old enough to lift a shotgun. Here you go. A little different with a 38, you know? Oh, it's just a little smaller. Thanks for the use of the hall, Lieutenant. All right, come on, Sid. It's time that you learn from the master. Watch out. Wild Bill Vronsky is on the loose. Cup and saucer grip. Cup and saucer grip. Right. Right. All right, now you bend your knees slightly. Keep your arms straight, elbows locked. Take sight of your target, and then you squeeze the trigger evenly. Squeeze the trigger evenly. And jerk it. Giving private lessons, Vronsky? Ah, uh, just a couple of friends here, Chief. Hi, I'm Sydney Kovac. This is my partner, Carol Stanway. How do you do? Carl Fallon. Yes, we know. You're not from our division. We're private detectives. Oh, I see. Well, when you get admitted, Lieutenant, drop by and see me, okay? Pleasure. Excuse me, Chief Fallon. Uh, we'd just like for you to know that we'd be glad to help in any way with the, the Strangler investigation. I appreciate that, but we have a special task force on it. Just trying to be good citizens. We'll get the job done. Believe me. That's one hell of a cop. Do you remember those ritual murders on Russian Hill a few years back? Mm -hmm. Yeah, wasn't one of the victims some big shot ambassador? Right. FBI got involved, SID men, forensics, you name it. In the end, it was the chief who traced back a tiny yellow thread. A thread? Less than half an inch. He wouldn't give up till he found out where it was made. Paris. And that was enough to zero in on the killer. I mean, it took two months of painstaking work, but in the end, it was worthwhile. You really admire that man, don't you? Taught me just about everything I know. All right, let's finish up here. I got to get back to work. OK. You know how to shoot? 
Never said I didn't. Well, why'd you make me waste all that time with the teaching stuff? Just wanted to make your day. Gotcha. He's still at home, and besides, we're supposed to go to... Please, this is definitely not the time to tell him. We'll talk about it tomorrow, Jeff. Nor? Oh, sorry, I didn't know you were on the phone. Well, that was only Ellen. You know how she can rattle on. She sure does. Who was at the door? Vronsky. There's been another murder. The Strangler? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Bonnie Chase is the victim. Bonnie Chase? Good Lord, I was just watching her last night on television. Does she live in Pacific Heights? On Washington. On Washington? What are you doing about this? I'm doing the best I can. Listen, Chief, I don't think the general's our man. Why not? Because of his background. Well, maybe he saw something, and maybe we'll get lucky this time, too. Luck has nothing to do with it in this or any other case. We just have to keep picking up the pieces. Eventually, they'll all fit together. Cooper has the guy in the maintenance office. The area cleared, Lieutenant? Yeah. What are you doing here? Who have you got in the maintenance room? Sid, please, don't interfere with our investigation. We are not interfering. Two friends are dead, and we're in this whether you like it or not. Is the man you're questioning a suspect? Uh, Lieutenant, can you take a look at something? Yeah, I'll be with you in a minute. Who is the suspect? In my opinion, he is not a suspect. We're going to be heading back to the lab, so... Yeah, I said I'll be with you in a minute. Go ahead. If he's not a suspect, why are you questioning him? Because he was just here, that's all. That's all? What does he have to do to be a suspect? Run around with a red bandana hanging out of his pocket? Anything's possible. But this man happens to be an ex-general with medals down to his kneecaps, OK? OK, Sam. I want a full shot from this position. All right, let's get the police car's red lights in the background, OK? Hi, I'm Sidney Kovacs. I'm Carol Stamwick. We were friends of Bonnie's. So was I. Ironic, isn't it, that she was so wrapped up in this particular story? Bonnie was really determined to get into this strangler killing. She worked on it every spare minute. Do you think she'd come up with anything? I think so. In fact, last night before she left, she said she had a lead to run down. Five seconds. A lead? What lead? She didn't say. Q. We're in Pacific Heights, the scene of the latest strangler killing. Bonnie Chase. Sydney. Friend and colleague. There he is again. Who? That guy that was pushing the wheelchair outside of Rita's house. What's he doing around here? A neighbor on her way to work discovered the body. Thank you for your cooperation, General. That must be General Whelan. They didn't talk to him very long. Well, maybe they didn't. Let's see what I can do. Strangler who once again used a red bandana to choke the life out of his latest victim. Deputy Chief of Investigations Carl Fowler and his staff are on the scene. I want to 
talk to you about the Strangler case. You're not a police officer, are you? No, I'm a private detective, then. Well, I've done all my talking for today. Now, go away. Well, I just have a few more questions. You... Leave me alone. Delightful custom. Even more delightful with someone as lovely as you, Miss Tan. <laughs> you are a charmer, Mr. Potter. And you, my dear, are most gracious to come calling. Know thy neighbor. I don't know who said it, but I like the thought. Oh, uh, that'll be all, Arthur. Uh, we'll pour. I, I don't get many visitors these days. Oh, we'll have to do something about that, won't we? You have a lovely home. Thank you. Arthur cares for it. Does a fine job. How long has Arthur been with you? About uh, five months. Where did you ever make such a find? Lucky. He answered an ad in the newspaper. Uh, cucumber. Um, Arthur's special dressing. Quite good. He cooks, too. Uh huh? Mmm. You are lucky. Do you happen to know where he worked before he came to you? Oh, well, he had some references, but I simply took a liking to him the moment I met him. He's quiet, hardly know he's around, takes care of the house and me, and he's scary lucky to boot. Just the sight of him is all the protection I'll ever need. <laughs> Did you check his references? Oh, they're a waste of time. All they ever give you are names to call where the references are favorable. Oh, so you have no idea where he worked before? Well, as I recall, uh, there was a, a diner on Fremont was one place, but why all the interest in Arthur? Oh, I guess I'm just jumpy, what with all that's going on. Well, I suppose if I were a woman, I'd be jumpy, too. I really must ask Arthur for the recipe for his dressing. Delightful. been better. You made a hell of a mess. Next time we'll be neater. Uh. You were right. 
Somebody cut your brake lines. Now, I hate to be one of those kind of people that said, I told you so, but did you see what you're messing around got you? Obviously, we did a little more than messing, Lieutenant. We made somebody very nervous. Yeah, nervous enough to try and get us out of the way. You got any idea who it was? Well, we talked to a couple of people. Was any one of them a cook? Why do you ask? Because the boys at the lab said your brake lines were cut with a serrated knife, like the kind you find in the kitchen. Arthur Dorian's a cook and a male nurse, so he says. He was at both crime scenes. Arthur Dorian. Get right on it. Oh, Bronsky, I got another one for you. General Whalen. Oh, we already talked to him. Yeah, but dig a little deeper. I think you might be missing something. And by the way, could you get us the Claudia Parker file? Are you kidding? Well, she was the only one that survived the strangler's attack. The police had to have interviewed her. You know, I just can't be handing out police files to civilians, you know? There is some weirdo killing women who live in Pacific Heights. That's here. Do you know what could happen to us? Come on, Vronsky. We just handed you a prime suspect. It's against the rules. Well, yeah, when it comes to your lives, the rules kind of go out the window. Right. Not when you're working with the deputy chief of investigations. He stays by the book to the letter. Good night. Oh. Lock your door tonight, okay? Put him in a holding cell and tell Fulton to come pick him up. You picked up Dorian last night. Well, is he the strangler? Bronsky? Here's the man who could tell you. Call the watch commander and get some more men on the heights. Ladies? But, Chief, is Dorian the strangler? No. He was afraid you were getting too close to finding out his real name. Which is? Donald Stack. He escaped from Folsom six months ago. Before the killings? Yeah, so what makes you think he's not the strangler? He had alibis for every one of the murders. He also had references. The man lies. We checked him out. Well, what about General Whalen? We interrogated him at the scene. <laughs> Some interrogation. Ten minutes and the man walks away. We found out everything we had to know. Wait a minute, Chief. I talked to him, too, and you know what? I think the man is really hiding something. Ladies, at this point of my life, I don't need a couple of watchdogs to make sure I'm doing my job. I'm glad you're all right. Where do you get off questioning the Chief like that? For your information, except for Bonnie Chase, we know where Whalen was for every one of those murders. I feel more comfortable with Frank. Now, Jeff, it'll just be another day. Please be patient. I'm living in my mother's house now. It's terrible owning a beautiful house in Pacific Heights and being afraid to go home. Like Bonnie Chase? She was here to talk to me. Bonnie's cameraman said she was working on a lead. Do you know anything about that? I told her just what I told the police. Every gruesome detail. Haven't you talked to them? 
they haven't been very cooperative. Not with us, anyway. That chief, um, Fallon, he seemed terribly understanding. You met Fallon? Well, he's the one that questioned me. Tell me something. How did you get away from the Strangler? He was inside the house, right? My mother came to the door. She knew I was home, so she uh, kept pounding and shouting. And there was no sign of forced entry? Well, I don't, don't know how he got in. It was, uh, it was in my bedroom. And you said that he attacked you from behind? His arms were like a vice. Oh, I thought he'd crush me. And then he, um, slipped the, uh... Oh, God, I can't. <laughs> you said you never saw him, but if he came up from behind you, you must have seen his hands. I was so eerie. Wearing those surgical gloves, you know... You can almost see through them, but you can't really. That's why I couldn't make out the details of his ring. Ring? Well, like I told Chief Fallon, it was rectangular on his right hand little finger. But then I... Uh, began to choke. I... I couldn't breathe. I... blacked out. Excuse me. How about that? A rectangular ring, right-hand little finger. And all this time we thought there were no clues. You know how the cops are. Sometimes they keep you detail like that secret. In case some crackpot confesses, then they know he's for real or not. That's how Fallon knew Dorn wasn't the strangler. He wasn't wearing a ring. Maybe he got rid of it. Well, then he would have had a suntan mark on his finger. Well, if Fallon's such a stickler for details, as Vronsky says, he would have looked for something like that. Well, he should have, but... Maybe we should go talk to him, huh? I think it's a good idea. I think we have to talk. Talk? About what? About us. Our marriage. I'm sorry, Lenore. You know what happens to me when I get wrapped up in a case. Now, I've tried to change. You're avoiding the issue. I thought you wanted to talk about our marriage. You know, my work interferes. I mean, if you want to talk about something else... You know perfectly well it's something else. We may not communicate very well, but we've lived together long enough, so you know what's going on. And what could that possibly be? Oh, come on, Carl. I am not one of your suspects that you're trying to trick a confession out of. Tricks? Tricks? They're no tricks. You want to confess? Confess! You know, don't you? The park, the apartment on Taylor Street. He's a good-looking young man, eh? A trifle young for you. You've been following me. You have no right. No right at all. I have every right. I'm your husband, damn it. I'm the one you swore to be faithful to, remember? Oh, and you never did like people who broke their vows, did you? You broke yours to me. Between your ambition and your affairs, you stopped being my husband long ago. So that's it. You want to get even. I hurt you, now you want to hurt me, is that it? No. No more hurting. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to go see Frank. Divorce, eh? You tell your lawyer about your infidelity? Why not? I want the whole world to know I have been cheating on the deputy chief of investigators. Keep your voice down, Lenore. Why? I want everyone to know. I've been cheating because there is no marriage. You ended it long ago. That's enough. And don't you think you're going to get one penny of my money? I don't think our timing is very good. Now let's get out of here. Go talk to Bronsky. Yeah. Lenore, your hysteria is boring me.
don't have your facts straight. There was nothing about the ring in the report. Miss Parker said she described the ring in detail. How come the chief did the report himself anyway? Because he happened to be on the scene. That's not a big deal. Well, yeah, but you must remember her talking about the ring. She said that she saw it under the surgical glove. I wasn't there. Well, then who was? Just the chief. He talked to her alone. Isn't that a little unusual? The lady was pretty shook up. He probably didn't want her hassled by a bunch of cops. Do you have any idea why he would purposely leave out any mention of the Strangler's ring? You're talking nonsense, Sid. Lieutenant, have you ever noticed if the chief wore a ring? Yeah. He said he misplaced it. I noticed it last week. Well, was it rectangular in shape, and, and did he wear it on the right pinky finger? We are talking about a decent, dedicated, brilliant police officer here. Now, Bonnie Chase talked to Claudia Parker, found out about the ring, and, and then what if she talked to Fallon about it? It cost Bonnie her life. You know you're both out of your minds. I know this isn't easy. Look, OK, you think that he's going around killing these women. Why? What's his motive? Or do you suppose he's just plain crazy? Did you know he was having marital problems? Doesn't everybody, sometimes? And that his wife is the former Lenore Meyerson, heir to an enormous fortune? Oh, wait a minute. Am I following this? You think his wife's going to divorce him and cut him off from all that money, and he's out there killing other women? So that when he murders his wife, everybody will think it's the so-called strangler that did it. Oh, you know what I think? I think you two are starting to take this this thing about being detectives far too seriously. That's what I think. OK, Lieutenant. But what if we're right? Then the chief's wife is in real danger. Come on, Sidney. Look, whatever you do, whatever you do, don't tell people that you know me. All right? You haven't touched your wine. Best bottle we had in the cellar. The best bottle? Is that what we're doing? Celebrating our filing for divorce? You're the one that's filing, not me, remember? But yes, I guess in a way we are celebrating. And why did you let Cook and Maria go after they served dinner? You expect me to do the dishes? I guess I didn't want any servants nosing around while you and I try to work things out. Carl, it's all been said. I have to go to the office, but I'll be back. We have a few details to work out.
Fallon? Come in, come in. You want to see me, sir? Yeah, yeah. Shut, shut the door. You feeling all right, Chief? Mm. Terrible headache. Must be a migraine. I've had, had a few lately. Look, why don't you go home and get some rest? And uh, if there's anything important, I'll give you a call. No, I, I, I don't want to worry, Lynn. No, you know, you know how she is. If I could just take a nap for an hour or so without any interruption. Sure, no problem. I'll have your call switched to me. Thanks, Vronsky. All right, sure. Look, uh, you just give me a call when you're up. Sydney and I are wrong, we'll be the first to admit it. Look, the man is under a lot of pressure. Now he's having migraines. Well, how can he work in that condition? I told him he ought to go home. Yeah, this is Vronsky, 3884. Will you switch over all Chief Fallon's calls for the next hour or so? Yeah, until somebody calls you. Thank you. Why the next hour? Where is he going? To sleep. He locked his door and does not want to be disturbed. Is there another door to Fallon's office? Well, you don't give up, do you, Is Callan? there? Yes, in the back corridor. Why? Because he's gone, that's why. He came in here long enough to set up an alibi, and now he's left to kill his wife, and Sidney's with her. What are you talking about? Knock on his door. See for yourself. He's not in there. I can't do that. Well, you're thinking, Lieutenant. I'm going to go find my friend.
Yeah, this is Vronsky. Uh, can you take a look and see if Chief uh, Fallon's car is still in the garage? What do you mean he never came in? Sure he did. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe he parked on the street. Right. Don't come any closer, or I'll shoot. I mean it. You're not going to use that gun. Oh, yes, I will.
Yeah, I know, Vronsky. Yeah, I know. It's really difficult. Especially since you were so close to the guy. I agree with you. He didn't have any choice. Carol? Well, she's fine. I'll tell her. You get some sleep, okay? Bronski asked about you. How you doing? Still thinking about Chief Fallon? No. Rita and Bonnie Chase. I guess that being so close to all this death has really taken its toll on me. Yeah. I know. I know that you're supposed to deal with it. Carry on. But I just can't seem to forget. I think you should remember. You know, keep a positive and vivid image of the person in your mind. Remembering's best. I suppose so. Sort out all the pleasant memories and happy times and just sort of paint a perfect picture of that person. No. Better to hold on to everything, the good and the bad. You know, think about the silly things that made you laugh and the silly things that made you mad. Keeps the person real. Not perfect. 